Moland House Historic Park presents. I was married by the time I was 15 years old. Yeah, I didn't stay single for long. Like I said, it was a lot cuter and younger back then. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might just get to the river. Let's get to the Delaware River. That's not too far. And then um, we'll take a boat down the Delaware, and then we might get out to Philadelphia, where we'll get on an even bigger boat. And that boat is going to start sailing. Sail five or six weeks eastward across the Atlantic Ocean. You're going to get up into a place called England. In England, there was a king. The king sat on the throne. The king ruled all of us here in America. He was living in the colony of Pennsylvania. That was a colony of King George of England. So we were colonies of Great Britain. There was a body called Parliament, that for the folks that were making all the rules, all the laws for us. And well, you see, I'm not terribly politically inclined being a woman myself. I don't have much say in how government's going to go. In fact, I got no say in how government's going to go. But I listened to the men around me, and they were a little grumbling. They were saying, we have no say in our government. We keep sending all this tax money to them. They keep making rules for us. But we have no say in those rules. That was called taxation without representation. Can y'all repeat that after me? I'm gonna, actually, I'm going to say a bigger, bigger sentence. Taxation without representation is tyranny. Can y'all say that again? Taxation without representation is tyranny. Say it like you really mean it. <laughs> say it like you're really angry because you have no say in your government yet you're taking your money and doing stuff with it and you got no say, all right? One, two, three. Taxation without representation is tyranny. That sounded much better. That sounded just like those folks in 65 when they was complaining about the stamp act, 67 when they was complaining about a bunch of taxes during the towns and that. <laughs> then they started sending soldiers here to America to enforce the collection of those taxes. And that led to a big altercation in Boston, Massachusetts, which y'all might know as the Boston Massacre. Yes. And if they couldn't get representation in Parliament, then they were going to do something about it. Well, a couple more years went on by 17. 70. I'm going to go back a year. In 1773, there was a tea tax. That's what brought part of the Congress together. In 1773, a bunch of folks was arguing about tea, a tax on tea, and an unjust tax on tea. And, well, that Americans couldn't even bring tea into their own country. I know we're talking tea. Y'all heard of the Boston Tea Party? Wasn't just a bunch of folks sipping tea. No, there was a bunch of folks dumping tea into the harbor. So, my husband. This is when he became very politically inclined. My husband, the barber, Willie Hayes, he became in charge of enforcing the tea boycott in Carlisle, <coughs> Pennsylvania. So not only was he politically charged, he was also uh, militarily motivated, so to speak. This would all serve me in good stead in 70. Five and 76 when they started calling up recruits because well that body of congress in philadelphia they weren't able to get us any representation in parliament in great britain and it was all getting ugly and it was apparent that a war was going to be needed now you heard of that fella george washington right y'all heard of george washington well he was dispatched by that congress in 75 to get together an army. British folks, they had managed to settle themselves fat and happy by the autumn of 1777, right down there in Philadelphia. They'd all settled in nice and comfy as you please in those nice big comfy brick buildings with the fireplaces and such. Where was the American army gonna go? They had to keep an eye on the British. So they set themselves up in a valley, a cold, wet valley, a few miles to the west of here, called Valley Forge. That's where my husband and all the troops from Carlisle started marching out, because they were going to meet George Washington there in Valley Forge. What was I going to do? Stay at home? 
cook and clean at home? Who was I going to cook and clean for? All the men folk had gone, taking all the money and the work with them. <laughs> I was going to follow the army. That's what I did. I followed out with my husband, because I was going to stay with him. It's a safe place to be with my husband. And with the army, as far as I was concerned. So I became something called a camp follower. I don't like that word too much because it implies I'm just following along with the camp. A worse word, worse word was baggage. Because I was walking along with the baggage wagon. So everything with the baggage wagons, including the women and children, were called baggage. That's not nice. I prefer another term. I was marching with the wagons. Why don't you call me a wagoneer? I like that term better. Can y'all say that with me? Wagoneer! Alright. Five, six, seven, eight. Father and I went down to camp along with Captain Goody. There we saw the men and boys as thick as tasty pudding. Thank you, old Bandy. Find the music and the step and let the girls be handy. Oh, there we saw a swamping gun large as a log of maple upon a tiny little cart, a load for father's cattle. Thank you, old Chiquilla. Thank you, old Bandy. Mind the music and the set and with the girls be handy. There was General Washington, wrong way, or the left. There was General Washington upon a strapping stallion, giving orders to his men. I guess there were a million. Thank you, old keep it up. Thank you, old Andy. Mind the music and the step and with the girl be handy. That's the part all the time. That's all right. All right, one last time. One last time. Yankee Doodle is the tune Americans delight in. So do to whistle, sing, or play. It's just the thing for fighting. Yankee Doodle, keep it up. Yankee Doodle, bandy. Mind the music and the step and let the girls be happy.